Hi guys! Welcome sa Engineer Math Channel. Sa video na to ay ituturo ko sa inyo ang current division rule. So kung gusto niyo itong matutunan, just keep on watching. So kung sa voltage division rule, ito ay applicable sa series resistive circuits. Ang current division rule naman ay applicable sa parallel resistive circuits. Pero bago ko sa inyo ituro ang concepts at formula sa current division rule, ay i-introduce ko muna kayo sa another property of material which is the opposite of resistance. Ito ay ang conductance. So kung ang resistance ay ang ability of material to resist the flow of current, ang conductance naman ay ang ability of material to allow current to pass through it. So in symbol, it is denoted by the letter G which is equal to the reciprocal of the resistance R. So therefore, G is equal to 1 over R, where G is the conductance measured in Siemens or S, and R is the resistance measured in ohms or omega. So since the conductance is inversely proportional sa resistance, we can say na kung mataas ang resistance ng isang material, mababa ang conductance nito, at syempre, less current then ang magpo-flow dito. Kung mababa naman ang resistance ng material, mataas ang conductance nito at syempre mas mataas yung current na dadaloy dito. So just like sa resistance, we're in pwede nating mahanap yung total or equivalent resistance ng isang specific type of circuit connection, let's say series or parallel. Pwede rin nating mahanap yung total conductances ng isang type of connection ng circuits, either series or parallel. So in analogy, kung sa series resistors, ang total resistance nito ay ang sum ng bawat individual resistances. Sa parallel resistors naman, ang total ng conductances nito ay equal sa conductances ng bawat resistors. So paano tayo nag-arrive sa ganong formula? So suppose we have n number of resistors connected in parallel. Let's say we have R1, R2, R3 until Rn connected in parallel and we are to find the total resistance across the terminals A and B as shown. We know that the reciprocal of the total resistances of the parallel circuit is equal to the sum of the reciprocal of its resistance. So we have 1 over Rt is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3 plus so on plus until the reciprocal of the last resistance Rn. But since we know that we can represent the conductance of each resistance as just the reciprocal, therefore we can substitute for each reciprocal ng resistance as also their conductances. So therefore, 1 over Rt is the same as the total conductances which is equal to the sum of the individual conductances of the resistors. So therefore, we have Gt is equal to G1 plus G2 plus G3 plus so on until G sub n. So naprove natin na sa parallel circuits, ang total conductance ay sum ng individual conductances. So ngayon, alam na natin yung concept ng conductances. Pwede na tayong mag-proceed sa illustration ng parallel circuits para maderive natin yung formula for current division rule. So let's say meron tayong dalawang resistor connected in parallel, R1 at R2. And then across them ay meron tayong voltage source or battery that has VT volts. And then meron din tayong dadalay na total current IT. We know na sa parallel circuits, Constant ang voltage drop across each element, which is equal doon sa total voltage or the battery. So therefore, Vt is equal to V1 is equal to V2. And we can represent Vt using Ohm's law as equal to It times Rt. We know that for parallel resistors, the total resistance is equal to the reciprocal of 
the sum of the reciprocal of its resistors. So we have Vt is equal to It over 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Since meron lang tayong dalawang resistors. But then we know that 1 over R1 is equal to G1 and 1 over R2 is equal to G2 as the definition of conductances. So therefore, we can represent Vt as It over G1 plus G2. Likewise, sa V1, we can find V1 as I1 times R1. So, pwede rin natin i-represent yung R1 in terms of conductance, which is equal to 1 over G. So, therefore, V1 is equal to I1 over G1, since R1 is equal to 1 over G1. Same as sa V2, it is equal to I2 times R2 by Ohm's law. And then, using conductance, we can represent R2 as 1 over G2. So therefore, V2 is equal to I2 over G2. Now, if we equate Vt and V1 in terms of the current and conductance, we have Vt is equal to V1 substituting Vt as It over G1 plus G2 and V1 as I1 over G1, we can solve for I1 by manipulating the equations using algebra. Therefore, I1 is equal to G1 over G1 plus G2 times IT. Likewise, for V2, we have Vt is equal to V2 or IT is equal to G1 plus G2, which is equal to I2 over G2. Solving for I2, we have G2 over G1 plus G2 times IT. And this derived formula for I1 and I2 represent the current division formula. So just like Voltage division rule, napansin nyo na ang current division rule ay nagre-represent sa fraction ng conductances ng bawat resistor dun sa total current IT. For example, sa I1, if you want to find the current across R1, you just, you just have to multiply the total current dun sa conductance ng R1 over the sum ng conductances ng bawat resistance. Or in other words, yung fraction ng conductance ng isang resistance over dun sa total conductance ng parallel resistances ay multiply mo lang dun sa total current ng circuit. At makukuha mo na yung current across that resistance. So, pwede natin ma-extend yung division formula for n number of resistors connected in parallel. So, let's say if you want to find the current across n resistor it is equal to the conductance of that resistor over the sum of the conductances of each n resistors and multiply it by the total current that is supplying the parallel resistors Let's denote this as I. So this is the general formula for current division rule. Now, para ma-verify natin yung formula sa current division rule, uh, let's try to apply this using the circuit that we have sa parallel resistors video ko. So basically, nasolve na natin yung bawat current through each resistor. And now, we will use current division rule to verify kung magkatali yung sagot natin. So, ito yung circuit natin. Anyway, kung hindi nyo pa napapanood yung video ko about parallel resistors, ay ililink ko na lang para malaman nyo yung way of computation natin para mag-arrive tayo dito sa mga currents na nasolve na natin. So, 
Nirepresent ko yung uh, battery doon as a current source since ito yung total current nila na na-compute natin which is IT. It is equal to 1 amp. And then, ito yung mga na-compute natin current through each resistor. Sa I1, we have 0.6 amp. Sa I2, we have 0.3 amps. And then, sa I3, we have 0.1 amps. Now, let's apply the current division rule. So, for I1, we have G1 over G1 plus G2 plus G3. Since meron tayong tatlong resistors, and then, multiply it by the total current IT. Substituting the values, we have 1 over 100 all over 1 over 100 plus 1 over 200 plus 1 over 600 times 1 amp. And using calculator, we got the value of I1 as 0 0.6 amps, which is the same. Likewise, sa I2, we have G2 over G1 plus G2 plus G3 times IT. So, substituting the values, we have 1 over 200 all over 1 over 100 plus 1 over 200 plus 1 over 600 times 1 amp. Again, using calculator, we can find I2 as... 0 0.3 amps which is the same lastly for i3 we have g3 over g1 plus g2 plus g3 times it so substituting the values we have 1 over 600 all over 1 over 100 plus 1 over 200 plus 1 over 600 times 1 amp Therefore, I3 is equal to 0 0.1 amp, which is the same as before. So, as a counter check, itatry ko rin siyang isimulate para ma-verify kung tama yung formula natin sa current division rule. So, itong simulation ko to verify the currents na na-compute natin through each resistor using the current divider formula. So, for R1, we have 600 milliamps or 0 0.6 amps, so tama. For R2, we have 300 milliamps or 0 0.3 amps, so tama din. And then lastly, sa R3, we have 100 milliamps or 0 0.1 amps, so tama rin. So therefore, na-prove natin yung current divider principle through simulation. So that is how to apply the current division rule for parallel resistor circuits. So sana ay may natutunan kayo sa video na to at maraming salamat sa panonood.